Welcome to Drunk Bible Study. This show's mission is to read every single word of the greatest story ever told. A warning to our listeners, the hosts of this show are sinners, but they're doing their best. There will be drinking and there may be some swears. They did say they'd try to keep it clean, but I wouldn't put my money on it. I'm Emily, and this is Drunk Bible Study, where my good friends, Dedeker and Jace, teach me, a born and raised atheist, all about the Bible. You're doing kind of like a beat poetry style. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It comes out differently every time, but that's fine. We're going to embrace, you know, the difference, hmm. spontaneity. It's going to be good. I know the yeah. two of you are currently residing in New York, and it is hot and wet. Muggy, it's hot and wet. steamy, sticky. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, it's a hot, wet American summer. It is. You could say. Yeah, summer's sure. almost over, but well, you know, that's all right. Hot, wet, biblical summer, really. That's true. Mm, that's mm. nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a new book yet again today. What it, I'm, I'm happy that we are continuing on this new book train for a while because once we get to Chronicles of Narnia, it's going to be. Forever in a day that we're sitting in those chronicles. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. Maybe it'll be a good review. Like we've spent enough time away from the tales mm-hmm. of David and Solomon and it's Samuel David and again. Saul and all those. It's, yeah, it's a review, right? Like we go okay. back to the same stories. I didn't know how far in the past we were going. My goodness. David is just all over this book. Yeah, it'll be everything from Kings. One and two, I think. So yeah, that mm-hmm. should be mm-hmm. all of them. It's amazing. That could be a total lie because the way that I deal with this show is that like listeners mention something and I'm like, oh yeah, that sounds right. But but it's like when I'm reading a book and I don't want spoilers, like I very much go out of my way personally to not be like, <laughs> what is Chronicles about? I'm going to look that up. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll figure out when I get there. No spoilers. It's true. It's true. Yeah. I don't look it up. I just expect the two of you to know. <laughs> Although see. you don't, you didn't know very much about the last book, right? And you don't know very much about this one either. Nope. Okay. Yeah, we've we've left the realm of books we know anything about long ago. Mm, interesting. I mean, Lamentation sounds like a bummer, but Jace, yeah. you're saying maybe it's not a bummer. Maybe it is. Yeah, I've been led to believe maybe it's interesting and not just a bummer, but it is bleak. It is, I guess. So supposedly it's written by Jeremiah, as in the, the, the bullfrog, bullfrog. Mm-hmm. Yeah, who the very same who was played by. Okay, yeah, I looked it up. Thank you. <laughs> so young Jeremiah was played by Rami Malek, and then old right. Jeremiah is played by Steve Buscemi. Uh, yes, I remember that now. Yeah, he was so old man Steve Buscemi was on an episode of John Oliver recently. And I was like, wow. You just mean normal present day Steve Buscemi, right? <laughs> Correct. Who is an old man <laughs> okay, now. Okay. <laughs> um, it was really interesting just seeing how he's aged. He actually looks less strange now in his older age. Oh, like he's he's finally grown into his, yes, his whole to his, aura. His self. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's like <laughs> a normal man self. walking up. Oh, that's Steve Buscemi. <laughs> Wow. All right. So yeah, old man Jeremiah. <laughs> there we go. Beautiful. <laughs> right. Okay. So... So historically, this was attributed to Jeremiah, the bullfrog. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, But, you know, and like everything, modern day scholars are like, well, it's probably not at all true based on the knowledge or the anachronisms they use or whatever. But, you know, we can imagine that this might be Jeremiah. So maybe we have Steve Buscemi come back to kind of, you know, do the narration for this part or something like that. It could be fun. Uh, And then also, this, so, so to give it some context, Jeremiah was one of the the later prophets being like, Jerusalem's going to get destroyed. It's going to be terrible. And then this book is writing about, it's been destroyed and it's terrible. So it's kind of uh, okay. a direct sequel to that in a way. Can I ask, because I'm, so I know that they got conquered and taken by Babylon. So is that what this is? Yes, yes, exactly. Okay. Yep. So this is okay. This is 586-ish okay. BCE when, yeah, when the Babylonians came, destroyed them, imprisoned them, all that kind of stuff. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Amazing. Goodness. Well, what are you two drinking today for Lamentations? Ooh. Well, it's exciting because 
Jace found me a beer called Sweet Baby Jesus! Exclamation point. Sweet Baby Jesus! Wow. It is a chocolate peanut butter porter from Duclaw Brewing Company in Baltimore. And to taste it, strong on chocolate, not so strong on peanut butter, but, mm-hmm. but that's okay. It's still quite enjoyable. Lovely. Yeah, that sounds right up your alley. When it just in the the picture, like in the video when you were drinking it, it, it almost looked a little green. I know it's not green. Green. Uh, but it, now it's dark. Yeah, I thought it was like a really dark green initially, but it's not. It's just a oh, It's like a really, really early St. Paddy's Day celebration. There you go. Yeah. Oh, wait, early six months early. Dark. <laughs> Seven Patty's months early. Day. Yes. Well, so maybe you were confused because mine is in a green can. Oh, maybe it's I called... saw the both together. My eye just like drew both images together. <laughs> exactly. So this is called Whoa. Grass Wagon, and it's got this scary raccoon situation on it. It's like Rocket the raccoon. Yeah. 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 So I, I mostly got it because, you know, we're in New York right now. And so I was at the grocery store looking for whatever is local. Mm. And so I saw this and it was an IPA and I said, yeah, I'll give it a try. And here's an interesting piece of trivia about this IPA is that Dedeker tried some and she's like, huh, I don't hate this. Wow. So is it like a lighter IPA? Like a more juicy IPA? No, I'd say I it's more happened, on the juicy side. I had literally yeah. right that second finished a penny. Eating a Hagen dazs bar. Oh. And then following it up with the very really bitter IPA was like, huh, that's actually a pretty good combination of flavors. I don't know if yeah. I could do it solo. <laughs> I see. That makes sense, mm, though. You needed okay. a little bit of a palate cleanser in the mm. form of an IPA. Exactly. Right. Nice. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm continuing my summer drink trend. I decided watermelon just sounded so good. We have this un... I just like I just want to uh, impress upon you all. We have this unbelievable watermelon water drink at work. It's like fresh watermelon, rosemary, and lime, mm. and then a little bit of agave, and it is to die for. So I took some of that from work and made it into a martini Ooh. where I added Ooh. more lime juice, a little bit more agave, and then also vodka. And it's divine. It's delightful. Looks lovely. Huh. Thank yeah, you. That sounds mm-hmm. awesome. Watermelon's amazing in the summer. Okay. So one other little twist about today is that we're... So Lamentations is only five chapters, and we're doing it over two episodes. So we're going to do two chapters today which are on the shorter side. But then we're going to read Psalms 122 through 127. We're going to read several Psalms, but they're all very short. Uh, And maybe we can talk about them more when we get to them. But basically, they're more of those uh, songs of ascent that we talked about last time. And we we can talk a little bit more about what that's all about. Does that mean we're going to Jesus? Well, I mean, you know, depending who you are, you could make anything about Jesus. So, sure. Everybody does. I mean, Mm -hmm. most of the people that (laughs) we read in the bonus episodes do at least. Most of the pro-Jesus people do. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, that's why we call them pros. Yeah. Oh, oh, wow. Mm. Okay. (laughs) Let's do it. (laughs) Yes. All right, let's do it. All right, so today, as I said, we're going to be starting off Lamentations with chapters one and two. As we get started, we want to remind everyone to read responsibly and drink responsibly. You can drink along with us, or you can listen while you're in the car. But please do not do both at the same time. And with that, Lamentations, Chapter 1. Alas, how is it the city what? so desolate <laughs> that some oh, just, time was full we're of just people? <laughs> going straight to the races. <laughs> yeah, okay. I don't know what you just said, but thank you for that scintillating. I just switched to the <laughs> Yes. The Great Bible 1539. Alas, how is it the city so desolate that some time was full of a people? <laughs> Let's see what the World English Bible. Is that how they talked <laughs> to the, the, the people? <laughs> <laughs> wow. In my historical fiction, yes. Got it. Okay. Okay, here we here we go again. This time, the very modern, very understandable World English Bible. How does the city sit solitary that was full of people? She has become a widow who was great among the nations. 
She who is a princess among the provinces is become tributary. Goodness. Sorry to hear that. She weeps sore in the night and her tears are on her cheek, cheekies. I'm the sure it says cheekies. Yes. I haven't checked. Should I? It has to gotta be, be, right? Cheekies. Gotta be. Bet you a hundred bucks is cheekies. cheekies. Yep, yep. Tear is runa down her cheekies. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Oh, what a good translation. It's a good book. It's a real good book. A real good book. Among all her lovers, she has none to comfort her. All her friend have dealt treacherously with her. Wait, can I just point they out? They are become her enemies. All the lovers? Yeah. Yeah, there's multiple got, lovers. Mm-hmm. So yeah. she's just polyamorous. Mm-hmm. Just cool. Just saying. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. Judah is gone into captivity because of affliction and because of great servitude. She dwells among the nations. She finds no rest. Colon, all her persecutors overtook her within the straits. I like that there's a little bit of strategy there. It's like that's where they were defeated militarily was was in the straits. That that was the one. Yeah, it's clever. It's clever. The ways of Zion do mourn because none come to the solemn assembly. All her gates are desolate. Her priests do sigh. Colon, oh, maybe this is what they're sighing. (sighs) <sighs> her virgins are afflicted and she herself is in bitterness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That classic sigh. Sure. Yeah. Her adversaries are become the head. Her enemies prosper. For Yahweh has afflicted her for the multitude of her transgressions. Her young children are gone into captivity before the adversary. Jerusalem is always a woman. Yeah. We, I almost feel like we need to cast... Jerusalem mm. as a person. But how would that work in the film? Like, like when we I cut to these like modern dance sequences where someone's sure dressed up as a representation of Jerusalem. I love that, Dedeker. Yes, yes. <laughs> I was also thinking Correct. that maybe, maybe any time this comes up and someone in the story could get confused about it, we just sort of cut to Billy Joel. Going, you know, she may seem like a city, but she's always a woman to me. I love that. <laughs> I love him. And then, you know, something like that would be great. Okay, I like that. I like that. Billy Joel as the explainer. Yeah, just of the fact that of anything that is a woman unexplainably, we cut to Billy Joel to kind of clarify <laughs> that it's always a woman to me. Okay. Can we make the dancer the woman who is, was in all the Sia videos? She's grown up now. Oh, oh yeah. That's, fun. that's great. The, the little girl who's... What, what the dancer? The girl just in... Yeah. Are we talking about? Yeah. Um, I'll find it. I'll find it. I know her name. Like, yeah. No, no, no. I know who you're talking about. What dancer in the Bible? Maddie Ziegler. Uh, I don't... I'm not saying any dancer. She is Jerusalem. Oh, she's Jerusalem. I see. Maddie Ziegler will play Jerusalem. Okay, okay. Did you hear cool. what Dedeker cool, said? Cool, cool. She had an amazing idea. Yeah, he doesn't listen to me. <laughs> well, I do, Dedeker. That's why I'm here. <laughs> I'm your me- mediator, the go-between. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Thank you, Angry Torito. Yes, Maddie Ziegler. You and, you and Billy Joel. <laughs> yes. Yep. Okay, anyways. Where were we? Right. For Yahweh has afflicted her for the multitude of her transgressions. Her young children are gone into captivity before the adversary. From the daughter of Zion, all her majesty is departed. Her princes are become like hearts that find no pasture. What? Like hearts. Heart. H-A-R-T-S. Like a, like a deer. Heart. Yeah, deer. Oh. Stag. Yeah. Yeah. Like your twin fawns. Your twin fawns. But your hearts that find no pleasure. Your breasts. Your breasts. Yeah. What? Don't like being, they can't find a field. You're saying a lot of words that mean a different <laughs> word, but you're saying them as deer. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Yeah. Basically, deers are metaphors for everything, it turns out. <laughs> Breasts and hearts and yeah, deer. Got it. Okay. Uh-huh. Thanks. Yep. yep. You got it. Cool. You got it. Okay. Her princes are become like hearts that find no pasture, they are gone without strength before the pursuer. Jerusalem remembers in the days of her affliction and of her miseries all her pleasant things that were from the days of old, colon, when her people fell into the hand of the adversary and none did help her. The adversaries saw her. They did mock at her desolations. Ha! Jerusalem has grievously sinned. Therefore, she is become an unclean thing. All who honored her despise her. 
because they have seen her nakedness. Yes, she sighs and turns backwards. Like turns her back to you or like steps backwards or like I have moons a feeling you? this is probably actually something upsetting and dirty. You think so? That's what, my What guess. does the message say? I was thinking yeah. like uh, what what's Hades down about that Persephone <laughs> and mm, okay. Like she's Persephone. Okay, so according to Eugene, nice Eugene, he just says <laughs> miserable, she groans and turns away in shame. Um, okay, but what does the great so Bible say? She turns okay, well, away great- in <laughs> shamey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it says ye she sigeth I think that's Saicheth, and is ashamed of herself. Oh, and no bending over or turning her around or... Yeah, so no. the World English like Bible that. was just like, we're going to add that yeah, for fun. Yeah, add that detail. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. I guess it looks like the NIV and the King James had a similar metaphor for <sighs> turning away in shame. So, all right. All right. I'll take it. Whatever. Her filthiness was in her skirts. <laughs> she didn't remember her latter end. Therefore, she has come down wonderfully. Is that what I mean? Think it means <laughs> gracious. I think, I'm pretty sure that in this context, it refers. Okay, well, either it means your latter end, as we all know, or it means your the back airhead, like the consequences, the defeat, like the, the consequences. Future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Days of future past. Okay. Hmm. Okay. She yeah. didn't remember her days of future past. Okay. Okay. Her filthiness was in her skirts and she didn't remember her days of future past. Yeah. Therefore, is she come down wonderfully? She has no comforter. What? Colon. Okay. My head is spinning again. I, there's just there's like comforters. Too many comforter, but she came down wonderfully, but she's filthy. I think wonderfully meaning end. like spectacularly bad. Like awesomely. It was wonderfully awful. Okay. <laughs> you know? Okay. <laughs> maybe, okay, maybe the writer of this, we've called it Lamentations because we're all reading it as if this person was really sad, but maybe this is like hot goss. And they're like, Ooh, oh my gosh, yeah. she came down wonderfully. You should have <laughs> seen it. It was a train wreck. Uh, goodness. Oh, I say one of those people. <laughs> right. She has no comforter. Colon, see Yahweh, my affliction, for the enemy has magnified himself. The colons in this are seem all over the place. Mean like they just randomly stuck it mm-hmm. in. They're like, I'm bored of periods and commas. I'll just try this one for a little bit. Maybe that's a what a bullfrog thing, <laughs> a Jeremiah thing. <laughs> it's like sure. Solomon Saul. What? Who? <laughs> bullfrog. <laughs> there it is. The adversary has spread out his hand on all her pleasant things, for she has seen that the nations are entered into her sanctuary concerning whom you did command that they should not enter into your assembly. All her people sigh. They seek bread. (laughs) They have given their peasant things for food to refresh the soul. Look, Yahweh, and see, for I am become abject. Is it nothing to you, all you who pass by? Look and see if there be any sorrow like my sorrow which is brought on me, with which Yahweh has afflicted me in the day of his fierce anger. From on high, he has sent fire into my bones, and it prevails against them. He has spread a net for my feet. What? He has turned me back. He's spread a net for my feet. I like to catch him, to get him, to trick him. No one him, can escape to trap him. tiny net. Like he's a fish. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like a fish. He's turned me back. He has made me desolate and faint all the day. The yoke of my transgressions is bound by his hand. I oh, see the yoke is bound. So, that was confusing grammar. I would have messed that up if I was speaking that out loud. A lot of this is a little confusing. Mm-hmm. No, but grammar. I mean, it was correct, but I would have said it wrong, you know? Mm. The yoke of my transgressions is bound by his hand. They are knit together. They are come up on my neck. Nice little knit scarf. Mm-hmm. He has mm-hmm. made my strength to fail. Colon, the Lord has delivered me into their hands, against whom I am not able to stand. A lot of bummers so far in this. It is lamentation. <laughs> but it's not even... It is even, living up to its name, yeah. It's not even poetic bummers. At least there were some like nihilistic poetic bummers in Ecclesiastes. This is just like... Normal bummers? This is very Jeremiah. There's kind of one note. <laughs> it's very 
Sorry, so, Jeremiah. So Jeremiah. <laughs> wow, what a burn, Dedeker. <laughs> she it's just one note. Like, we get it. Yeah, yeah, we know. This happened. Great. Wait. You're not even doing anything interesting with the interpretive dancer that we paid for. Good point. Angry Dorito in the chat says that the great Bible says the yak of my transgression. Yes, that's pretty yeah, the good. Yaki, the yaki of my transgression. <laughs> I mean, this could make the whole thing more poetic. Yeah. The yak of my transgression is come at the last. With heis hand hath he taken it up and put it about to my neck. But strength is gone. The Lord hath delivered me into those handies. Whereout I cannot quit myself. Handies. <laughs> my- the handies. Handies. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. Okay. I do love this translation. Verse 15. The Lord has set at nothing all my mighty men in the midst of me. He has called a solemn assembly against me to crush my young men. The Lord has trodden as in a wine press the virgin daughter of Judah. She is. For these things I weep, my eye. My eye runs down with water. (laughs) Because he's trying some poetry here, I think. (laughs) Attempting. Water, it's running down my (laughs) eyelid. (laughs) Because the comforter who should refresh my soul is far from me. My children are desolate because the enemy has prevailed. Zion spreads forth her hands. There is none to comfort her. Yahweh has commanded concerning Jacob that those who are round about him should be his adversaries. Jerusalem is among them as an unclean thing. Yahweh is righteous. (laughs) Righteous. For I have rebelled against his commandment. Mm. Please hear all you peoples and see my sorrow. My virgins and my young men are gone into captivity. I called for my lovers, but they deceived me. Is Is this Israel talking now, you think? You mean Jerusalem? We're echoing like, Jerusalem, now, I mean, sorry. Because yeah, yeah. now we're in first person and talking about lovers deceiving virgins and young men. But it's the same lines as before. Oh, is it a, is it a repeat? Well, but before it was in the third person. It and said her like virgins everyone. are afflicted yes. and she's in bitterness yes. and her lovers have turned into her adversaries. So Jerusalem's talking now. Okay, yeah. So this the dancer, Maddie Ziegler, mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. comes out of her you know, interpretation. And then she comes out of herself. Right. Maddie Ziegler crawls out of Maddie Ziegler. That, that would be an Asiya music video. Wow. wow. And then yeah. and yeah, starts yeah. talking. And then addresses, breaks the fourth wall and addresses the camera directly. She's like, uh-huh. my lovers have deceived me. I called for my lovers, but they deceived me. My priests and my elders. They said that they had genitals like donkeys, but it wasn't true. Whoa. It was not true. <laughs> and they said out. twin fawns that you couldn't tell apart, but I could tell them apart. <laughs> my, <laughs> my priests and my elders gave up the spirit in the city while they sought them food to refresh their souls. See, Yahweh, for I am in distress. My heart is troubled. My heart is turned within me, for I have grievously rebelled. Abroad the sword bereaves. At home there is as death. They have heard that I sigh. There is none to comfort me. All my enemies have heard of my trouble. They are glad that you've done it. Also, by the way, this has just been like colon after colon after semicolon mm-hmm. after semicolon after colon. Are there? Yeah, yeah there are periods too, but it's just not as many as you'd think there should Very be. Very few and far between. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You will bring the day that you have proclaimed, and they shall be like me. Uh, okay, they will be like me, meaning they'll they'll get theirs one of these days, or they'll be oh, like maybe. I was. It's an interesting all idea. cool. Yeah. Hmm. Let all their wickedness come before you. Do to them as you have done to me for all my transgressions. For my sighs are many, and my heart is faint. <sighs> is that it? I'm so not impressed. That's, that's chapter one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so I'm so not impressed with lamentations. <laughs> well, Dedegar, you are you have very high standards. I do. I do. I'm sorry. I feel like this book was kind of an unpleasant surprise. I was so excited for us to move on to Esther, and then all of a sudden we have to read the entire. We can't leave out any books. So no, we're not. We gotta we, do we're it. not, Dedeker. That's what we signed up for. No, I know. I know. We're committed. We're committed. Yes. No one can doubt our conviction. No one should doubt our conviction. You're right. But yeah. I don't have to like it the whole time. Okay. Yeah, you can doubt okay. Jerusalem's conviction, sure, but not ours. Not ours. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, 
Are we going to take a break? I think we should continue on and then take a break before Psalms. That's my opinion, but okay, that's fine. Then let's do two. Here we go. How has the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud in his anger? He has cast down from heaven to the earth the beauty of Israel. And has okay. it remembered? Okay, what? hang on. This is wonderful. I just looked at what Eugene had to say here. He's trying to make this interesting, which I appreciate. Thanks, Eugene. He starts this off. It just says, oh, ho, ho, dot, dot, dot. How the master... Wait, hold on. He says, ho, ho, ho? It's oh, oh, oh. But I think he means, oh, ho, ho, how the master has cut down daughter Zion from the skies. Oh. It's just like that he's trying to add some character work here. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Goodness. Oh, oh, oh. He has cast down from the heaven to the earth the beauty of Israel and hasn't remembered his footstool in the day of his anger. He lost oh. his footstool. He was so <laughs> <Apparently>. angry. <laughs> My goodness. Or or wait, is Jerusalem the footstool? Is that what we're implying? That that's the position of uh, honor for Jerusalem? Oh, maybe. A place for God to rest his feet? Oh, that he, then he's forgotten about it? He's forgotten about it. He's kicked it he's away. kicked it to the side, yeah. Hmm, interesting. Oh. The Lord has swallowed up all the habitations of Jacob and is not pitied. He has thrown down in his wrath the strongholds of the daughter of Judah. He has brought them down to the ground. He has profaned the kingdom and the princes of it. He has cut off in fierce anger all the horns of Israel and of these deer of which you all speak. (laughs) Uh (laughs) Uh He has drawn back his right hand from before the enemy. He's going to slap him. Mm -hmm. He has burned up Jacob, whoa, like a flaming fire, which (laughs) devours round about. He has bent his bow like an enemy. He has stood with his right hand as an adversary, has killed all that were pleasant to the eye. In the tent of the daughter of Zion, he has poured out his wrath like fire. This is definitely... It's getting more intense. Lamanti. Lamenti. Yeah, no, I'm into it. Something's happening. The Lord (laughs) is become as an enemy. He has swallowed up Israel. He has swallowed up all her places. Palaces. <laughs> palaces. He has destroyed... All the palaces and the places. <laughs> How many palaces are there? We just talk about the temples. Uh, I mean, there's probably several. I mean, at this time, we would have had Solomon's cool temple and his palace yeah. and his porches. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe we had some other ones. <laughs> and his porches. At least that one. His, por- his porches. Porches. <laughs> porches. <laughs> he has destroyed his strongholds. He is multiplied in the daughter of Judah, mourning and lamentation, the title of this book. Oh, there <laughs> uh, it is. Hey. Drink. Hey. This is the line that will, in the trailer, we'll be sure to have that line right before you. Know, chunk, mm, on there screen. it is. The title lamentation. Yeah. Hmm. He has violently taken away his tent as if it were of a garden. He has destroyed his place of assembly. Yahweh has caused solemn assembly and Sabbath to be forgotten in Zion, has despised in the indignation of his anger the king and the priest. The Lord has cast off his altar. He has abhorred his sanctuary. He has given up into the hand of the enemy the walls of her palaces. They have made a noise in the house of Yahweh. (laughs) As in the day of a solemn assembly. (laughs) That was the best I got for the noise at that point. Yeah, that's good. Yahweh has purposed to destroy the wall of the daughter of Zion. He has stretched out the line. He has not withdrawn his hand from destroying. He has made the rampart and wall to lament. They languish together. Her gates are sunk into the ground. He has destroyed and broken her bars. Her king and her princes are among the nations where the law is not. yes. Her prophets find no vision from Yahweh. The elders of the daughter of Zion sit on the ground. They keep silence. They have cast up dust on their heads. They have girded themselves with sackcloths. The virgin of Jerusalem hang down, the virgins of Jerusalem hang down their heads on the ground. Mm. My eyes do 
fail with tears. My heart is troubled. My liver is poured on the earth. That's unfortunate. That's not going to be good for you. Well, huh. I'm sorry. Yikes. You're going to die. Your, your liver? liver? If I've learned anything from the show House MD, it's over for you soon. <laughs> your liver is... If, if you're suddenly, your liver is pouring out of some kind of orifice. <laughs> liver and kidneys. <laughs> Yeah. Turns out your liver is important. Not going to be good. Your liver is pouring out. Huh. What yeah. what yeah, else? Do, what other other translations are there about that? So the King James also says my liver is poured upon the earth for the destruction of the daughter yeah. of my people. So I think that's where yeah. the web got it from. Okay. Let's see here. The complete Jewish Bible, yeah, says everything in me is churning. A little more general. All right. Uh, okay. NIV says my heart is poured out on the ground. Uh, it's not better, but but it, it that's more metaphorical. More poetic, I suppose. Yeah, more metaphorical the, and poetic. Liver is... Yeah. Has, see, I thought that... Okay, I was under the impression that at this time, in this particular culture, the seat of the emotions was actually like the bowels yeah. rather than the heart like it is for us. Liver is throwing me yeah, off. Yeah, but maybe the liver is in that area. It's in that general region, the bowel region. Wait, I mean, it's closer than, yeah. Does, the, does this have like something your, to do with the, the, uh, bile, the your humors? humors? Yeah. Perhaps. Was the yeah. humors yeah. then? Th this well, time? <laughs> no, but would it have been at the time of the people translating this to English? Maybe? Oh, I guess in the King James, maybe if they're like, oh, yeah, the liver, yeah. oh, that's where it all begins. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Eugene says, my insides have turned to jelly over my people's fate. <laughs> okay. Somehow Eugene that's... Just taking the teeth out of everything. Weird, yeah. <laughs> my insides have turned to jelly. <laughs> John Michael thinks the kidneys. Yeah. Okay. Well, so... My liver is poured on the earth. <laughs> oh, God. Sorry, what? read this next. Read that next line, and then I want to tell you what Eugene thinks it says. Okay, my liver is poured on the earth because of the destruction of the daughter of my people. Because the young children and the infants swoon in the streets of the city. Okay, you know, not far off, actually. Okay, he says my insides have turned to jelly over my people's fate. Babies and children are fainting all over the place. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> so Baby that just really struck me. A funny just image. Fainting. <laughs> All over the place. Oh. Fainting left and right. All over the place. <laughs> they tell their mothers, where is grain and wine? When they swoon, like the kids. What are these Those babies? babies. <laughs> and the babies, they're like, where is my wine and my grain so that Who I can make some are beer? These babies. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Oh, uh, you know, things are rough. These kids have to grow up way too fast. Yeah. Uh, oh, they do. When they swoon as the wounded in the streets of the city, when their soul is poured out into their mother's bosoms, mm. what? Shall I testify to you? What shall I liken to you, daughter of Jerusalem? What shall I compare to you that I may comfort you, virgin daughter of Zion? For your breach is great like the sea. Who can heal you? Your prophets have seen for you false and foolish visions. They have not uncovered your iniquity to bring back your captivity, but have seen for your false oracles and causes of banishment. All that pass by, clap their hands at oracles and causes of banishment. All that pass by, clap their hands at you. Oh, oh, here we go again. Okay. They hiss and wag their head at the daughter of Jerusalem. <laughs> Sorry, I can't make a sound for that one, but people listening at home just have to believe we're really wagging our heads here. They, wa they hiss and wag their head at the daughter of Jerusalem saying, is this? The city that men called the perfection of beauty, mm. joy of the whole earth. Mm -hmm. All your enemies have opened their mouth wide against you. Ah. They hiss and gnash their teeth. Ah. 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 They say we have swallowed her up. Certainly, this is the day that we looked for. We have found, we have seen it. Yahweh has done that which he purposed. He has fulfilled his word that is commanded in the days of old. He is thrown down. <laughs> he is not pitied. Goodness. He has caused the enemy to rejoice over you. He has exalted the horn of your adversaries. Their hearts cried to the Lord. Wall of the daughter of Zion. 
don't know what that means. Let tears run down like a river day and night. Give yourself no respite. Don't let the apple of your eye cease. Arise, cry out in the night at the beginning of the watches. Pour out your heart like water before the face of the Lord. Lift up your hands toward him for the life of your young children Mm. that faint for hunger at the head of every street. Look, Yahweh, and see to whom you have done thus. Shall the women eat their fruit? The children that are dandled in the hands? Dandled? I'm sorry, okay. what? Okay, uh, uh, dandled. I'm pretty sure that says dandled. To, to... I don't know what dandled means. Dandled. To dandle. So Eugene says, look at us, God. Think it over. Have you ever treated anyone like this? Should women eat their own babies? The very children they raise? Did Eugene say that? Of course. Okay, but what, what is the great Bible? Did I say the word dandle? Dandle. Right, yeah, right. Let's see here. Shall the women then eat her their own fruit, even children of a span along? Shall the Ch- children of a span along? Of a span of a span long. A span. It says, shall the women eat their fruit, the children that are dandled in their hands? Oh, I Maybe see. they mean dangled? I don't know what... No, no, dandle. Okay, to dandle. I looked it up. It means to like, you know, to dandle. (laughs) (laughs) You didn't get that in your SAT questions, (laughs) Jennifer? You're 100% on your SAT questions. It says says to move a baby or young child up and down in a playful or affectionate way. Like to do like, you know, to bounce them. Like rock a bye baby. Dandle them. Yeah, so I think we're we're getting like ah, oh, even the child that's like small enough to to dandle. To dandle, I see, I see. Okay, so this says even children of a span along that they're as long as a span, which is you know your your pinky to your thumb when your hand spread out. So that yeah, that's a pretty tiny little baby. That's a tiny baby. That's like a pre like a neonatal. Yeah. That's a that's yeah. a that's a fetus. Like a neo yeah. neonatal, yeah. Neato, 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 baby. Neato, <laughs> So neato, Dan, so neato. Dandelos. <laughs> okay, ready? Here we go. Shall the priest and the prophet be killed in the sanctuary of the Lord? The youth and the old man lie on the ground in the streets. My virgins and my young men are fallen by the sword. I love how they only care about the virgins. They're like, all the other women mm. don't care. Oh, they're basically trash already. <laughs> right. Yeah, 100%. You have killed them in this day of your anger. You have slaughtered and not pitied. You have called, as in the day of a solemn assembly, my terrors on every side. There was none that escaped or remained in the day of Yahweh's anger. Those that I have dandled and brought up (laughs) has my enemy consumed. (laughs) Not again. It was his word of the day. Two dandles in one chapter? Two dandles. <laughs> it, was, it was in his word of the day calendar. And he's like, well, here we go. <laughs> it's funny because he's like, because he's saying those that I have dandled yeah. and brought up at has my enemy consumed. So maybe he's saying like all my little babies. Or, mm, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He really misses his dandling days. Is this Jeremiah? That's the question, Jeremiah right? Jeremiah well, saying that? Or is it Jerusalem speaking in a metaphorical sort of way? So these are like Jerusalem's people? Yeah, did we cut back to Ziegler talking again? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I think so. So I'm looking here at Eugene's version, and starting with verse 20, this is all in quotes, and before that was not. So it is maybe that like at the end of each chapter, we kind of go to, you know, then Jerusalem steps out and is like, Yes, this is how I felt about things. I did dandle them, and then they died, and I'm sad. Yes. D- <laughs> dandle me. <laughs> no. Oh, wait, I have dandled. No. Dandle, dandle me, daddy. <laughs> what? I Can you not be dandled? <laughs> wait, I, yeah, exactly. I'm like, come on. If you're an older person, maybe you can be dandled also. <laughs> okay, all right, everybody. This is your challenge for the week. Find a time and place where you can just mm. slip in the word dandle in conversation. Don't call attention to it. Yeah. Don't explain what it means. Just slip it in there. Nobody's going to know what and, you're saying. I mean, maybe... Well, so that's the thing. No, see how people react. See if people are like, oh, mm, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dandle. Yeah. Uh-huh, mm-hmm, yeah. And just like pretend like they know what it means. I want to know. That's that's the challenge to everybody listening. 
Go go dandle somebody. Go drop a oh, dandle. Geez. Okay. Hashtag drop a dandle. Okay, but also dandle somebody. That means that I am going to sit somebody on my knee. Kind of bounce them. Yeah. And do a little bouncy wouncy. It's fun. Yeah, do it. I do like drop yeah. a dandle. Recapture that childhood joy. Drop a dandle is a good... Okay. I mean, it sounds dirty, but it's not. That's the... F- Boom, drop a dandle. Oh, okay. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Yeah. I like this. I could see that maybe in some kind of uh, <laughs> children's music, maybe. Uh, yeah. It's like chill, what? You know, what are you talking about? Ask your mom and dad to drop a dandel. You know they're like like I don't know what I'm talking about. You took this in a very different direction, Jay's. We're trying to reclaim the word dandel and make it way more badass. Okay, okay. I think children who are dandled are probably too young to be using the word dandel. Mm, okay. Okay, yeah. Yeah, they don't know what it means. They're not going to be using that. No. We didn't know what it meant. Yeah, (laughs) but if we really work on popularizing this, then maybe kids will grow up knowing what dandled means because their parents are going to talk about it. Fine. Okay. (laughs) Maybe you're right. All right. Are we going to, are we, let's Let's, take a break. Let's take a break. We should do that. Let's just calm down. Late show break. Here we go. <laughs> While we get ready to read some psalms, we would love to tell you some ways that you can help support this show if it's something that you love. The best thing that you can do is to bring some of your friends along. Tell them about the show, post about it on your social media, uh, you know, blast it on a boombox while you're walking down the street, whatever it is, you know, get people into the show and come check out the live shows at drunkbiblestudy.com slash live. You can get all the information about upcoming shows. Uh, and, and you can go check us out on Twitch. Also, if you're able to contribute to us financially, that would really go a long way to help support the show. We have a Patreon at patreon.com slash drunk Bible study. We would love to see you there and to get your support. And as a thank you, we have things like early releases of episodes, personal toasts on the show, Emily's drink recipes, and our, our undying dandles. And yes, we're back. You know, I realized our editor, Leia, has a baby. She probably dandles. Oh, yeah. Oh, 100%. Leia, do you dandle? Let us know if you dandle. I'm sure. Let us know if you do dandle. Yeah. Yeah. Let us know if you did dandle at one point, if you no longer do dandle. <laughs> anyway, a lot of pressing questions for Leia that we'll have to... Well, let us know, Leia, and we'll update the people on it. Um, we're going to read some psalms. So we're going to read Psalms 122 to 127, yes? Correct? Yeah. So so these... Do you have a happy psalm song? So, a happy psalm song? Yeah. I mean, we'll do our, we'll do our silly psalms mm-hmm. with DBS kind of situation. Oh, good. So just to give a little bit of context, I mentioned this okay. before, that these are more ones that are labeled Song of Ascents, like going up ascent. Um, and there's going to be a bunch of these. These go through Psalm, I think, 134. Or something like that. Oh wow! Yeah, 120 to 134 are all these songs of ascent, and uh, they're also called gradual psalms, or songs of degrees, or songs of steps, oh. or songs for going up to worship, or mm. pilgrim songs. Mm. So they were maybe kind of sung while you're on your way to the temple, or maybe while you're doing a little pilgrimage to Jerusalem or something like that. That's fun. Uh, we can talk a little bit more about them in the bonus, maybe. That's that could be fun. fun. But, uh, but yeah, just give a little context. These are all little short, great. short, fun, you know, imagine a group really getting into singing this, sort of like a wheels on the bus go round and round kind of situation. Cool. (laughs) And now it's time for Silly Psalms of Ascents with DBS, the part of the show where DBS comes out and reads some psalms. A Song of Ascents by David, 122. I was glad when they said to me, let's go to Yahweh's house. (laughs) Our feet are standing within your gates, Jerusalem. Jerusalem, that is built as a city that is compact together, where the tribes go up, even Yah's tribes, according to an ordinance for Israel to give thanks to Yahweh's name. For there are set thrones for judgment, the thrones of David's house. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Those who love you will prosper. Peace be within your walls and prosperity within your palaces. For my brothers and companions' sakes, I will now say, peace be within you. Is that a thing that people say? Peace be within you? Peace be up in you? No, like peace be with you, right? Yeah. Yeah, we say it also with with you. you. 
Yeah, you got that part. Yeah, yeah. that's a Catholic thing. But if you really want to throw people off, just be like, peace be within you. Yeah. I, yeah. It reminds me of that episode of Fleabag when she's like, when the priest is like, please be seated. And she's like, and also with you. And then she says, that is good. That is good. It's so good. I will now say, peace be within you. For the sake of the house of Yahweh our God, I will seek your good. Now, this is a fun one. I'm sorry. to I, do, I know we no, don't normally do this for Psalms, but I looked up another translation, the message of the peace be within you line. And instead it says, friendly insiders get along. Hostile outsiders keep your distance. Whoa. Goodness. So it's like keep your peace within you, meaning like don't be not peaceful, please. (laughs) Whoa. (laughs) Very different. Yeah. Okay, Jace, it's you. Okay, great. Yeah, sure. It's me. Song of Ascents, Psalm 123. I lift up my eyes to you who sit in the heavens. Behold, As the eyes of servants look to the hands of their master, as the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to Yahweh our God until he has mercy on us. Have mercy on us, Yahweh. Have mercy on us, for we have endured much contempt. Our soul is exceedingly filled with the scoffing of those who are at ease with the contempt of the proud. Fiend. Oh, that's the, right. that's it. Right. That's it. Real short, four verses. Wow, well, one twenty-four. It's interesting because some of these just say "Song of Ascents" and some of them say "Song of Ascents" by David. Mm-hmm. This one is by David, allegedly. If it had not been Yahweh who was on our side, let Israel now say, "If it had not been Yahweh who was on our side when men rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us up alive." There it is again. When their wrath was kindled against us then the waters would have overwhelmed us. The stream would have gone over our soul. Then the proud waters would have gone over our soul. (laughs) Blessed be Yahweh, who has not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul has escaped like a bird out of the fowler's snare. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Yeah, but we'll keep on. We'll keep on keeping on. Our help is in Yahweh's name, Hmm. who made heaven and earth. Not one of your best, David, but nice try. Yeah, not as much sort of sensual imagery as we're used to from David. Let's see how 125 is. Those who trust in Yahweh are as Mount Zion, which can't be moved, but remains forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so Yahweh surrounds his people from this time forward and forevermore. For the scepter of wickedness won't remain over the allotment of the righteous, so that the righteous won't use their hands to do evil. Do good, Yahweh, to those who are good, to those who are upright in their hearts. But as for those who turn away to their crooked ways, Yahweh will lead them away with the workers of iniquity. Peace be on Israel. Just a little, just really cover the bases real quick there. (laughs) I see. I'm imagining maybe, okay, what if we think about these Song of Ascents? It's like everyone's getting ready to go to Jerusalem for the, you know, one of the big festivals or something. And it's like an open mic night. Ooh, and this is like all just different fun. people kind of getting up and doing, you know, mm. it's like, hey, everybody, this is one by David. Uh, here it is. You know, and then they like do it. Here's nice. yet another one by David. Right. Just a quick little peace be on Israel before you leave. Exactly. Like, yeah. Peace be on Israel. And you drop the mic. <laughs> 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 all right. Psalm 126. A song of ascents. Uh, uh, check, check, check. Is this is this on? Okay, yeah. Mm. <clears throat> check, check. Okay, I'm at the open mic. Imagine, get yourself in the in the feel of an open mic. Got it. When Yahweh brought back those who returned to Zion, we were like those who dream. Yeah. Then our mouth was filled with laughter uh-huh. and our tongue with singing. They said among the nations, Yahweh's done great things for them. Yahweh has done great things for us. And we're glad. Restore our fortunes again, Yahweh, like the streams in the Negev. Those who sow in tears will reap in joy. He who goes out weeping, carrying seeds for sowing, will certainly come again with joy, carrying his sheaves. That was fun. That was actually kind of a little beat poetry almost. I was into that. That was fun. Yeah. This is our last one, Emily. All right, this one, it's by Solomon, apparently. Ooh, Ooh, here we go. Switching it up. Hey, Sauls. Well, guest appearance. Unless Yahweh builds the house, they who built it labor in vain. Unless Yahweh watches over the city, the watchman guards it in vain. 
It is vain for you to rise up early, to stay up late, eating the bread of toil, for he gives sleep to his loved ones. Hmm. Oh, so if you can't sleep for some reason, you know what that means. Mm. If you're insomniac, then you don't believe in God. Yeah. Yeah. Behold, children are a heritage of Yahweh. The fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows in the hand of a mighty man, so are the children of youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. They won't be disappointed when they speak with their enemies in the gate. That was weird. (laughs) Whatever, Solomon. (laughs) Yeah, I think we're going to talk about that in the bonus episode because that verse is one of the foundational verses for the quiverful movement. What? Which, uh, yeah. What is that? Well, we'll, well, we'll, we'll talk, talk about, about it. it. You will learn. Okay. You will learn about the Purple Stay movement. Stay tuned. There is so much I don't know still. <laughs> There's so much you've learned, though. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. All right, everyone. That was that was fun. We're going to finish Lamentations next week. We can't wait to see you then. Thank you all for joining us for Bible study today. If you want to join the audience in our live stream shows, follow us on Twitch at Drunk Bible Study or go to drunkbiblestudy.com slash live. If you want even more Drunk Bible Study, including early releases, cocktail recipes, personal toasts on the show, and more, become one of our patrons at patreon.com slash drunkbiblestudy. If you enjoy the show, take a moment to subscribe and then write us a nice review on iTunes, letting other people know what you like about it. You can also join fellow listeners in the Drunk Bible Study Fans and Fellowship Facebook group or go and join our Discord server at discord.drunkbiblestudy.com. Find us on Twitter at Drunk Bible Cast, on Instagram at Drunk Bible Study, or send us an email to info at drunkbiblestudy.com. Drunk Bible Study is created and produced by Jace Lindgren, Dedeker Winston, and me, Emily Matlack. Our theme song is Book Club by Josh and Anand from their album Home of the The The. For more information, visit us at drunkbiblestudy.com. I made a memory about your dad.